George here, and we're still working in my implementation of Five Nights at Freddy's inside of Unity, along with the HTC Vive. It's been a while since we've actually used any of the VR stuff, but that's because we're focusing on the actual mechanics of the game. Hopefully with that getting, or at least progressing, I should say, um, we'll have something concrete to focus on and maybe something to actually play soon. Uh, from the last video, we had just, uh, last two videos, we had just finished uh, both the win and loss conditions and just showing something on the screen in that case. We, of course, need to make that more robust. We need the level to restart and so forth and so on, or, or put you to a menu. But before we get to that, I wanted to implement something that I thought might be kind of cool as a mechanic, and I mentioned it before, and that is actually having some sort of a lock on the door so that the animatronic has to break through or do something else, I don't know. So for the animatronic, we already have it. When it gets to a door, it stops its pathing and then does some work, um, opens the door and then moves through it. What we need to do is when it does come to a door, it needs to then check to see whether or not the door state is locked or unlocked. If it is locked, then we need to have some sort of a, uh, a probability check to see whether or not it wants to do, uh, w whether it wants to break the door or not. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. Maybe it's how many times the door has been broken or how aggressive it is towards the player. Things that we haven't programmed yet, but might need to be in there later on. So let's just dive in and make this actually happen. So let's start with the animatronic itself. So let's see, uh, da, 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 da. Foxy static model, scroll on down to animatronic path logic. Go ahead and open that up. And here it is. Let's close a few of these things. We can get rid of win and loss for right now and play manager. So animatronic path logic, we have on trigger enter where it kills the player, which is not what we want right now. Uh, actually, what we want to work with is the waypoint itself, the animatronic waypoint. So coming over here and double clicking there. So here's the animatronic uh, waypoint itself. And this is what actually handles a trigger event when it uh, enters or when the Foxy enters it. So here we go. Um, let us go ahead and get rid of some of these debug statements at this point. It's really not necessary anymore. And uh, yeah, uh, you know what? We're just going to comment that one out because that might be helpful in the future. Okay, so we check to see whether or not we're dealing with an animatronic. If so, we then check to see, um, we grab the logic of the animatronic. We see which waypoint are, we see what waypoints are available and then we move through it. This is not what we want either. What we actually want is let's go to the door itself and let's see what the door, so the door has a door swinging script attached to it. Let's open that up really fast. So the door swinging has a on trigger enter, which is where we handle it. It checks to see whether or not an animatronic is there. And if so, it goes ahead and grabs the path logic. If there is path logic, it calls toggle door on this, which then starts a coroutine to rotate the door. What we're going to want to do is query the door state to see whether or not it is locked or unlocked. Therefore, the door itself is going to need that kind of information. So for door swinging, let's just add a locked or, or not locked. We'll do a serialized field. Let's see, serialized field, um, bool is locked is equal to false. And let's finish that off right there. Okay, so we've got is locked now. This is something that I don't believe we're gonna be changing externally, so we don't need to worry about that right now. So let's go down with is locked and inside of the on trigger enter script, begin evaluating what's going on. So if trigger is an animatronic, then we're going to see, we're gonna open the door up. What we wanna do though is do a quick test to see if is locked, then we're going to do something else, we're just going to open the door as usual. So that's in the else clause. So now if it's locked, we want to have some sort of a, uh, it's not going to break the door always. Um, I need to signal to the logic path, which is right here. So actually this, I'm going to bring this out of here. There we are. So that we grab path logic there. So if path logic again, what I want to do is I want to swap and go backwards, which is part of the logic. So let's open up that script right here. That was a uh, control click, by the way, to get to the script easily. And I wrote a function in here, go toward previous waypoint, which is what I want to call. So we're going to call that. So if we get to the door, there's a chance that we're going to go back to the previous waypoint. So if path logic, then we'll do path logic dot go pre towards previous waypoint. 
And that is only going to happen if we do a check. So we'll do um, random dot, let's see, what do we want? Value is, if the value is, let's see, I don't know. This is going to require gameplay and analysis, but for right now, I guess we'll have the player, or we'll have them break it half of the time. So 50-50 shot at the moment. So if the value is greater than 0 0.5, we are going to go to the previous waypoint, else we are going to uh, break down the door. So now we need a uh, break door. So let's do void break down door. And for right now, break down door is just going to um, actually remove the mesh renderer from it. Or actually, we're just going to actually deactivate the door completely in this case. Uh, there's no reason for it to be there anymore. So we will do uh, break door down. And then we will do uh, set active for the this dot game object dot set active and we'll do a false on that because we also want the collider to turn off and everything else as well and that should be it for breaking down the door now we probably want to signal that the door has been broken so we're also going to do this dot uh open is open is equal to true that way we don't try to open it in the future as well although it doesn't really matter because it's gone and we're not going to trigger anything but we might as well have that state in there just in case. So let's come on back up to the top and see. And is locked should probably be false as well, just in case that this dot is locked is equal to false. Now we do need a way to lock the door. And let's see, this is serializable right now. Okay, good. So I can lock the doors from the inspector, but the player is going to need to lock the door. So let's create a public method. So public lock door. And we're just going to this dot is locked is equal to true. And we actually are going to need a check to see whether or not the door is closed. If is clo if not is open. And we're going to have to deal with something being open or something not being open in the future. I know because when the player grabs it and starts opening it up, that technically violate some of the stuff we're dealing with. But it's once again, something that we're not gonna deal with at this moment. Let's uh, just put that on the list of things. Uh, let's see. Actually, I have that still. Uh, fighting over control of the door. Stops doors, open them, go through multiple AIs. Uh, when is a door open versus closed? Uh, do we need this variable? All right, so with that, we can come back over here, and I think I can start grabbing doors now. And we're just gonna grab all of them for right now, and I'm gonna do an is locked on all of them. That way, Foxy has to go through something. And let's go ahead and hit play. Okay. Um, he broke the door, but then decided to go backwards, which kind of made that a little awkward. All right, and once again, we run into the problem of me not finishing all the nodes. So let's actually really quick do that. I'm gonna fast forward through me doing this so you don't have to watch it actually happen, but I just need to create these connections. So let's come over here to, let's do, we need, All right, so now we have all of our waypoints actually set up, so we're good to go. Uh, another thing, though, is now that I'm thinking about it, when he, when the Foxy does get to the door, I kind of probably want some sort of a pause, something to actually happen that waits. So I have instantaneously go to previous, and then I have break do uh, door down. Break door down probably should take in the animatronic path logic so that I can act, or at least inform, the thing to break the door down, because it's going to have to sp uh, tell it to do an animation of some sort. So we should probably uh, have it pause. So w when we do that, we actually have this somewhere in here, I believe. Pause pathing, yes. So let's do path logic dot. Actually, we're going to need an I enumerator for this. I enumerator. This is going to happen over time. And all this stuff can happen. Is open, is that, this can happen. But then we're going to need a 
yield return new wait, wait four seconds. And we're gonna have it wait a certain amount of time. I'm gonna say it's gonna take two seconds to break down a door. So that's plenty of time for the player to get out of the way. And before we do that, we're going to do the path logic dot pause pathing. And then after we're done, we're going to do path logic dot resume pathing. All right, there we go. So that should be a little bit better. Let's go ahead and hit, uh, I got an error. Let's come on and figure out what that is. This is the problem. There we are. And hit run. There we go. That's some indecision right there. Oh my gosh. Okay, did I get an error? No, he just logged up. What made you lock up? Oh, yeah, um, duh, start coroutine. That would probably be nice to actually have. So there we go. Now things will work properly, hopefully. Hit run. Broke the door, but did not go through the door. That's uh, an interesting choice. Most likely that just has more to do with placement than anything. Of He probably hit the node inside of there already. Very indecisive when it comes to right here. I don't understand why it loops back on the same path. It has, there's a very low probability of it doing that. Might have to increase, decrease the probability even more that it loops back, because this is happening way too much. All right, so why did you just stop? Going to new waypoint five, Am I doing checks so that when I hit it, hit the, well, when I hit the door, it shouldn't matter anymore. I've been through it. So is this a problem with the waypoint? Okay, we're going to look into this in the next video to see if there's some sort of a glitch going on because this is long enough. Anyway, we're going to stop with this video here. We'll figure out what's going wrong in the subsequent video. But uh, at least now, Foxy will go to the door, potentially destroy it if it's locked, and move on from there. I will see you all next time. So long and goodbye.